Welcome to KluCon Weekly. Join us every Wednesday to learn about the latest cutting-edge developments in the real-time communications industry. KluCon Weekly is brought to you by FreeSwitch Solutions. Get support and professional services directly from the creators of the FreeSwitch open source project, solving your issues in the most efficient, stable, and scalable way possible. Get the FreeSwitch advantage. Visit freeswitch.com. Also brought to you by KluCon, the premier technology conference for developers by developers. Join us every summer in Chicago. KluCon kicks off on Monday with our annual hackathon, The Coder Games, followed by three days of technology-rich presentations discussing telecom, WebRTC, and IoT from developers around the world. To learn more, visit KluCon.com or call 877-74-A-CLUE. And welcome to KluCon Weekly. The day is the 9th of January. And this week, we're going to be joined by Fred Mutisa. He's going to be joining us all the way from Africa, and he's going to be talking about using Lua with FreeSwitch. So uh, it should be real interesting, guys. If you need to uh, understand how Lua works, uh, stand by. He'll be here uh, shortly with that. First, let's go over and see Miss Abby for the news. Abby, how are you doing today? I am doing wonderful today. Thank you for asking. Hello, everybody, and as always, thank you so much for joining us on KluCon Weekly today. Uh, we have some new news today, very exciting. We now have a new Slack channel dedicated to KluCon. So we have another Slack channel in that same bank of Slack channels, but it's dedicated completely to KluCon. So we're very excited about that. Uh, it's the perfect place to tell us any ideas you might have for KluCon or just to chat if uh, the anticipation for August 5th is getting too much to handle. We'll be there for you. We feel it too. So I'll put the link for that if you guys haven't seen it already. I've posted it a couple times. Uh, if you uh, are on the newsletter, the link is in there for the last couple weeks. But I will post the link again at the bottom of this video just so you guys don't have to go and search for it. Um, also, of course, everyone knows new year, new me, hashtag. So we are going to be making some updates to KluCon Weekly, uh, just a few minor things. So we are sending out a survey to everybody. So check your inboxes for that tomorrow. So we're sending out a survey tomorrow, and we would really appreciate it if you would just take about four minutes out of your busy day to help us out so that we can make our show the best it could be so that everyone will enjoy it. Uh, last announcement, my favorite, is to catch us at IT Expo for a live free switch training. So if you guys are planning on going to IT Expo or maybe you live near Fort Lauderdale, this is an amazing opportunity. Uh, it is similar to the online training, but you get that in-person help. Uh, sometimes it just helps to be there in person. Uh, you can sign up for that online. Uh, I will also provide a link to that at the bottom of this video. And uh, again, that training is on January 30th at IT Expo. Uh, as always, feel free to leave a question for us in the Slack channel, in the IRC channels, uh, the YouTube comments, and we will ask Fred and we will answer those live during this call. Uh, that's all I have to say for today. Uh, back to you, Ken. All right. Thank you very much, Miss Abby. So let's go over. I believe we got Mike and Mike again for Community Corner. Mike, Mike, how are you guys doing? Doing great. Great. Happy New Year's, everyone. So, Mike, I've got a question for you, which I awesome. always do, right? Yep. <laughs> and this question comes off the Free Switch Dev mailing list. Uh, it's from Leon de Rouge. And he says, Good evening. I have I've got the Lewis SQL Postgres driver working and ran an example. Require Lewis SQL Postgres. And then he opened up the connection, did some queries, closed the connection. And it says, it's slowest of the three, smiley face. I didn't investigate any faster. So he's looking at a minimum of a 30 millisecond return and a maximum of an 122 millisecond return um, for the connection. So I guess this really just kind of turns into What's the best way to access Postgres from FreeSwitch? Um, so Postgres from FreeSwitch. So we have um, an entire database abstraction layer uh, built into FreeSwitch. 
Um, and it includes, among other things, native Postgres support. And that is exposed directly to Lua via the freeswitch.dbh with a capital D um, object. Um, by far, that is my recommendation. Uh, lots of people have tried using Lua SQL in the past. Uh, it frequently ends very poorly. Um, we have lots of reports of strange crashes and issues with that. Um, and I'd like to warn people away from as much as possible. Lua SQL just isn't stable and has had tons of issues over the year, performance and stability. Um, the free switch DBH layer um, generally has the functionality you need um, and is pretty uh, pretty beat up under high loads because uh, that's the same layer that we use throughout free switch. It includes handle caching and all this other sort of stuff. Um, so I strongly, re strongly re recommend using uh, the the free switch uh, DBH in Lua. Um, that that's tried and true code and uh, well understood and uh, should should work much better for you. Um, Lua modules, on the other hand, uh, are very hit and miss. So uh, have to be very careful what you. Uh, what you pick out the the Lua SQL and the SSL HTTPS stuff in Lua are the most problematic and ones we get the most issues with things crashing on. So I'd warn away from those. So so this guy's actually running in this in this case he's he, he's running he's running Lua and Lua SQL. But I mean, how what's the worst that can happen? What will it actually just can it can it actually take down free switch? Uh, yes, I have Lua SQL crash. We have multiple reports over the years of that causing constant crashing. So, uh, yeah, ba bad Lua modules can crash free switch. So, uh, buyer beware. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Answers from the experts. Awesome. And now we're going over to Abby for Blogspot. All right. Hey, everybody. I'm back again. Woohoo. Uh, I'm back with the blog spot on our new year of Klucon Weekly. So uh, we have a whole website full of blogs. If you want to go back and read those, those are on our free switch website. We have a whole bunch from a bunch of different authors from Anthony uh, Madison's about to write one. I have a lot more in store. So make sure you go to our website and check that out. But today, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what we know about Microsoft Edge so far, because there's been a little bit of drama in the browser department lately. So it's only been about a month since Microsoft announced that they are making big changes with their three-year-old browser, Edge, which they made after abandoning uh, Internet Explorer. So the company is completely rebuilding their browser from the ground up. They're completely abandoning their Edge HTML rendering engine and they're running on open sourced Chromium instead, which of course is the same engine that powers Google Chrome, which was the big news that we all saw headlined about a month ago. But more importantly, I think Microsoft is officially joining the open source community in a very much bigger way. Uh, they say so themselves. They're hoping to get a lot more involved. Uh, the corporate VP of Windows, uh, says that the change is inspired by making a web experience better. But uh, we also think that this change might have something to do with the fact that their significant has to do with their significant loss of market share. So while this internal makeover will increase compatibility with websites and battery life on Windows devices, it definitely will make web use easier. Users of Edge will remain at their all time low, which I think probably has a big thing to do with why they're uh, changing things up. So in December, actually, Edge accounted for only 10.4% of the total browser user share on Windows 10, which is how uh, their company measures the amount of users. Uh, Internet Explorer and Edge combined are down 1.5 percentage points, which of course Microsoft hasn't even touched, i.e. since 2016, which is three years ago now. So while the mechanics of the browser are being completely redone, the brand name of Edge is actually here to stay, which is a big question I had when I first heard the news. So the small percentage of people who do use the browser will barely even notice any changes, except for hopefully an enhanced performance. So if they're keeping the marketing the same, even though 
you know, they don't have a whole lot of user share. Uh, why are they bothering making this change? Why don't they change the marketing? So <clears throat> users definitely aren't the only ones casting edge aside. A lot of web developers are keen to optimize for Google Chrome. Uh, Google uh, has started creating Chrome only web services. <clears throat> and because they are a leader in the industry, a lot of people are following suit. It's just easier to do so because you have access to more technology. And uh, a lot of us modern users expect perfection when it comes to our web browsing. So even the smallest of hiccups on the smallest percentage of websites can become a giant inconvenience to users, especially when it comes to compatibility. So while Edge has been trying their best to keep up with Chrome, they just never were quite able to measure up. Uh, there are a few other reasons why Edge couldn't quite keep up, but that is a discussion for a different blog, which I will be writing in these upcoming weeks, and hopefully I'll have a chance to talk about it. So check that out. We'll be talking about that a little bit more. But meanwhile, we'll just keep talking about what Microsoft has in store for us. So Microsoft has been planning this jump for about a year now, but it might be another year before we see any changes. <clears throat> The new browser is going to be on all versions of Windows, and the updates are not going to be tied to majors window, major Windows 10 updates like they have been in the past. So this new and improved Edge will also be available on Mac for the first time, which is big news. Of course, it definitely comes down to a personal preference, so I don't know what you prefer to use, but statistically, a lot of web developers do use Mac computers, and in the past, it wasn't inconvenient for them to test Edge because it was only available on Windows devices. So hopefully, Microsoft hopes that down the line, this change is going to increase the attention of web developers as well as users, and hopefully that will up their market share and uh, bring back the power that is Edge. Um, the company is also investing a lot of time and money into enhancements that will ultimately improve Edge, as well as the existing Chrome on Windows. So Microsoft, what is really cool is they aim to work very closely with Apple and with Google, and really anybody else who commits anything to Chromium, uh, in order to make the web uh, better for everybody. So as members, of course, of an amazing open source community ourselves, it's really cool to see that uh, engineers from different companies are collaborating to make technology and web use better. So of course, it will be a year before we see if this actually pans out and if this uh, happy land of rainbows will work out how they think it will, but fingers crossed. And of course, we will talk more about some of those problems at a later date. For now, that's all I have to say about that. And we can move on to Fred. Thank you so much, everyone. <clears throat> so today we have Fred uh, presenting, having a presentation with Lua, which is one of my favorite languages uh, to work with FreeSwitch. Um, Fred, let's see it. Hi, Mike. So it's, it's it's always good to have you on the show, and you know your informational stuff really helps out the community. Quite thank you. It's quite informative, and I think it has a lot of the views on the YouTube channel, right? Yeah, they're actually growing with time. <laughs> yeah. It's my pleasure to find that uh, people are finding what I post there useful because uh, I want I want free suite to be to be used all over the world, and I want more people, mainly in Africa to get along with free switch because I know how powerful it is and I found it so useful. So that's why I'm interested in posting out things and making sure I can help so many people out there. And that's wonderful. That, that is absolutely wonderful. Cool. So today I'll basically be showcasing how you can use Lua with free switch. And we are going to be diving a bit deep into the script uh, to show how we can achieve different tasks that we would ideally achieve in the XML DAO plan, but this time we shall be achieving that in the Lua script. So do you want to tell us, tell us before we dive into it, why don't you tell us a little bit about Lua? Well, Lua is, a, I'll just say that it's a lightweight programming language. It's, it's actually very fast, it's closest to C when you look in terms of speed and memory. So it really tags in very well with the free switch. But, well, I'll also say that it all, the programming or the script speed all depends on your programming practices and methods that you use and, and, and 
and now good you are to language. But uh, Lua is being used out there in the community and I think it's it's one of the most used scripting languages if someone is dealing with free switch. Yeah, yeah. Well, when it when it comes to the scripting languages, I I think it's I I think it's the fastest for sure. Yeah. So if you want to get something done quickly, you know, do it in Lua. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So I would love to share my presentation, I guess. I okay. So uh, today I'll basically be diving into free switch. I'll just I'll just give an introduction of what Lua is. I've I've given a brief explanation of that. Uh, it's a lightweight scripting language, and it's closest to C in terms of speed and memory, and it's supposed to it, it supports object-oriented programming, and it's interesting that it also has Lua patterns, which are ideally basic regular expressions. So that means you can really do most of the things you would ideally do in that in a dial plan, in XML dial plan. You can do it in the Lua scripts, and you wouldn't really have any limitations. So basically, what Lua is going to do for us is is that our scripts are going to respond to requests from FreeSwitch, and then it will also complement the DAO plan for complex applications. If you notice that you're designing a system that is high, high speed, like you, you're doing bulk calls and you're doing a lot of processing in, in your DAO plan, or the DAO plan has become complicated, probably it's high time you think of scripting and that's where Lua basically comes in. It's also important, so Lua comes with free switch. When you install free switch, Lua comes installed there by default, but you can verify that in your free switch to make sure that Lua is installed. And when we go to the free switch console, it is very easy to, to confirm that. You can just type mod exist mod lua mod underscore lua, and as long as you have true there, it means it is installed. And then, if you want it to really run when free switch starts, you can check the modules.com file inside user local free switch. Yeah, in there, and then you search for mod Lua. You find a line there that that is uncommented, and basically that allows Lua to be loaded when free switch starts. Those are the checks that you're going to do. And then it is also important to understand that besides Lua, free switch supports other scripting languages like Perl, JavaScript, Python, and and Java. So if, if you're really in love with another language other than Lua, you can actually achieve whatever you want with those languages. And then I'll also show you a basic syntax of Lua. Uh, the first statement here is, when you see the, dash, the two dashes, those give us a single comment and then the dashes with square brackets, uh, that is a mount line comment. And then we can define variables just like the way you see that is var is equal to one. And then we can also define variable strings. And then we can also have some kind of array or in Lua we call them tables. So Lua makes extensive use of tables that are a hybrid of array and associative arrays. I'm going to show you a script where this is used. Uh, in my server, I have created a script called test1. And this is a script inside Klukon Weekly directory. 
and I want to first of all verify where my script directory is so I can do eval script directory that would tell me where my scripts are expected to be. So it's very important to know your path of scripts so that you know where they are going to be saved. In my free switch, my directory is user local free switch scripts, but I've created my scripts inside another subdirectory. So that means if I'm running the script, I'm going to have to define Glucon weekly in my code, as I'll show you shortly. But let me first show you the script test one what is in there. So I have variables var1, var alpha, var a1, and then I have my table. I have keys and then indexes inside there. It's like a format of an array. And then I'm displaying that on the screen where I have free switch dot console log. It is displaying an info on the console and that to be my table key is and then it will, we pull out the my table key one, and then we also display the index. And then we go further to look at how we define arguments. Arguments are like the second parameter. I'm going to show you how arguments work. When you run the script and you want to feed values at the console, those are what we call arguments. I'm going to show you shortly. And then we are saying if var, if the first if var is equal to a1, then we display var is a1. If the first argument is cl, then we display that. And then if it's not, then we display it's not cl. So I'll display, I'll run that quickly so that you can actually understand it better. Let's go to the console. So this is how I'm going to read the script. I'll go to the console and I'll run the script as Lua and then define the directory, click on weekly, because that's, that's where my script is and it's not part of the script, there, script path that is defined in the free switch configurations. Uh, so I'll go to the console and run that. Lua. test one dot lua and then I'll, I'll do I'll add the first argument and I can add another argument so you can see you can see the script has run and it's it has it has given us some information at the console and it is saying my table key one is one my table index is one Va is a1 and then it's saying the ag1 is not cl so you can actually see i mistyped it here uh, let's go back to the console and see that i can type it correctly and then you can see that it, it has captured it and said ag1 is cl so that is that is the basic syntax of a lua script and from that step we are going i'm going to show you how we can go further. What's amazing is how quick it is. Yes, it's it's really quite quick. You 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 might not find a difference with something done within a dial plan and then and then using a script, as I'm going to show later. Uh, so just to go further, the relationship between Lua and FreeSwitch, uh, calling a Lua script from FreeSwitch makes one object available. That is a free switch object, and I'm going to be showing you how that object will, will be put to use. Uh, you can execute a Lua script from a free switch console in two ways. Uh, we can use Lua or Lua run. Those are two commands we can use. If you go to the console and type Lua and tab, you'll see that there are two commands. You can see Lua and Lua run. The difference between these two commands is that Lua is blocking 
That means if you, you run a script with Lua, it will first end before displaying the messages on the console. It will love to first run to the end. But Lua Run gives you results in real time, as I'll show you shortly. So for, for Lua Run, a new thread will be created that will run a script completely independently from the console. If the Lua script has been called from the DAO plan, then an additional object is automatically already avail available. So when, when we are looking at running a Lua script from a DAO plan, we shall have an object that is made available, which is session, and that object will help us run commands or, cre or do, do activities in the script, just like those we would do inside the DAO plan itself. So the object session represents the call leg and lets you interact with it. So the, the things you would do in a DAO plan like answer, play media, get DTMFs, hang up, and so on, you can do all that in a script using the object session. So you could create a simple DAO plan like this one, simple Lua test. Uh, in this DAO plan, we are basically creating a destination in our expression, and we are saying if someone calls 9910, please send that call to a Lua script called test3.lua. Let me check my DAO plan. Conf default. That's where I've put my dial plan. So if someone, if someone basically calls nine one one zero, I'm I'm calling a Lua script. And my script is inside the directory click on weekly test3.lua. So let's see what is in there in that script. Test3.lua. So what my script is going to say, it's just going to tell you the call is not yet answered. Then we shall run session answer. And then it tells you, it gives you a warning the call has already been answered. And then we have a sound IVR or welcome to free switch. Uh, then we we can have then we can hang up. So let me let me do that. Let me run a demo of that. All I have to do is register a phone to free switch and then call nine nine one zero. So let's let's jump to the console. Let's see who is registered. Uh, show registrations. I have my extension here, 1000 registered. Let me bring up my soft phone, 9910. If I call that, I can call that again. You can, you can hear my speaker playing that sound. Welcome to free switch, the future of telephony. So it's really that quick. All I, you can see the difference how simple the DAO plan how simple the DAO plan is and all the complicated stuff are done inside the Lua script. So ideally here when we are looking at objects, a free switch is ideally the main object. And then we shall have different methods that we are going to use to access different activities in in free switch. We have different methods like console log where we can display info, warnings, and messages at the console. Then we have bridge, which can basically bridge two sessions or ideally two legs. Uh, in this case, you would we can have a script generating two calls to different extensions that are registered. 
And when these people answer, the script will bridge the call. I'll be showing you that script shortly. Then we can have sleep, which is like waiting. And then we can run other variables. And so the free switch dot session method or the, the object, uh, it represents a call leg. You can create an outbound call giving free switch dot session a DAO string as an argument. Just like I've shown here, where I have a variable called new leg is equal to free switch dot session. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying this should be calling the user 1011. Now we can run the Lua script and we bridge the two endpoints. Let's see my test for script, which has that code. Test for dot Lua. Uh, in this case, I can, I have 1000, 1000 and then 1002. I have 1000 and 1001 registered. All right, let me save that. Let me go to the console. If I can run that script as So you can see that script has actually made a call to my phone. So since, since both phones are registered on the same soft phone, of course the call couldn't stay up because it became busy, but the idea, you, you get the idea. It was able to generate a call from the script to both endpoints, ideally if there were two phones, if the other party answers and the other party answers, the script uh, bridges the two calls. Uh, I can also run this same script with Lua run. So you can actually see this call coming in. And free switch gives you all the information. It tells you the first leg was rejected. Uh, maybe I can show you the two legs that are going out. As it rings, I can show. All right, I'll just hang up here. Reject. All right, so Now, I'm running this script on the console, but we could run this script from the DAO plan itself because that's our main aim. We want, we want to see how we can run this from the DAO plan. And I would have my DAO plan look like, look like this, whereby if I dial 911, I'm sending this call to test5.lua. Let's see what I have in test5.lua. Ideally, it is the same code. I'm sending the code, I'm sending, when I dial 9911, it will send the call to 1000 and then bridge. So let's let's get this. When I dial 911, my dial plan will come and call a Lua script test five. 
and then test five will basically send the call and create a session to use a thousand and bridge the two sessions let's see that in action So from 101, I'm going to call 9911. So I've, I've made a call to 911 and I have an incoming call to 1000. So my soft phone is able to, to display and show you what the script has actually done. It has accepted the call. It has accepted the call and then it has initiated an outgoing call to 1000. All right, let's, uh, let's proceed. You know, I, I think if we set the debug to notice, um, I think it'd be easier to see on the screen. To the, the debug? Yeah, so, 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 set the log level to notice. And so we won't see as much, but, it, it, you know, it's, it's in the limited space. All right. Um... So it's also important to note that when the when the two legs are bridged, the script will stop at the bridge line until one of the legs hangs up. So that's very important to understand when when this script will stop at this level until one of the users hangs up. If you want the script to continue immediately after bridging from the main script, you would need to spawn another thread. Uh, like find the UID of each call from a new thread and use the bridge action from it. So we shall we shall basically need to do spawning, but that is another topic that maybe I'll cover some other time when, when I'm doing advanced Lua. Uh, but for now, it's important to understand that at this level, the script will wait for the call to hang up in order to proceed. Okay, so we, we have we have more session objects like that you'll be you'll be using in your script, like for example, session answer, bridged, and all those commands that you you can look at, like read, ready, say stream file transfer, sleep, all those ones they will be in use. If you want to to see more of the API, you can actually just go to the console and type show API. This will basically give you all the commands, all the API commands that you can utilize in FreeSwitch. Okay, let me explain more about this API. So the freeswitch.api, this is the second workhorse of freeswitch Lua scripting. It allows you to send API commands to freeswitch exactly as if you were at the console. So all the commands you would basically run at the freeswitch console, you can run them in the free in the Lua script using the freeswitch.api object. API commands are provided by mod commands and many other modules that you can find at the confluence. 
so let's do a test here where we can run where I can showcase the Lua API. That is test six. Test six dot Lua. Uh, in this case, I'm calling the free suite dot API function and I'm running different commands at the console. The first command would be free suite dot console. And then I'm saying the reply would be, we are executing version. And then we are executing another command status and we're executing Sophia status. And then we are originating a call in the background. B BG API originate, we are making a call to 1000. And then we are displaying on the screen and saying the reply is, and it's displaying whatever has happened above. Let's put this script to a test and see what actually happens there. That's actually, that's a really neat exercise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. So um, let's see what happens there. It, our script is test six. Uh, let's... Uh, all right, uh, it's test six. So right here, the script will pause at the ringing because it's it's making a call to my soft phone, and then I can I can I can hang up, and then it will proceed. As long as the call has hung up, it will proceed to the loop that says total is 16, 17, 18, 19, and then it says goodbye. Uh, let's go back to the script so that we understand what exactly is happening. So after, after it displays, you can see these commands up here that it actually executed. Uh, we have the version. We have the status, Sophia status right here. And then it goes on to create an outgoing channel and so on. So this is what happens here. And then after it has sent out the call, it will start a loop. And the loop here is, is this one, which does a counter. It shows channels as the call is going on. As the call is ringing, you're running this, this, this command show channels. Those, these, are the, these are the lines here that you've been seeing. And it's been telling you it's a total of one as it's counting down. And then once it is done, it will say, it will, it will end and then say goodbye. So the script will first create the API, then use it to interact with free switch server as if it were you at the console. It issues command version status, Sophia status, then it brings prints back at the console. Another way you can run this script would ideally be Uh, we can do FSCLI minus X Lua Lucon weekly forward slash test six dot Lua. So I'm running this command using the FSCLI but running it at the uh, the free switch command line. So there you have my phone ringing, but you don't see anything at the screen. And actually hang up. And I'm sure it is doing things in the background. You won't see anything until it hangs up. The reason is, so it has ended. Let's now try lower run. So you can see Luaran made the call, but it ran up to the end and then executed. We can't see anything at the console because Luaran doesn't have access to the stream right. So if we want to display at the console, we would replace 
the free switch dot let me just uh, just jump back to test six we might have to display let me just change this line So I'll just use the stream right to display at the Linux console. And then I have to use Lua because Lua run doesn't have access to that to that function, to that stream right object. Let's see. So after it does the countdown, we should see displaying at the console and saying reply is 20. Okay, hang all channels with calls, manager request. So at the end, where I put the mode stream, oops, I've run the script again. Sorry. The end here where I put the stream right, it was able to display on the Linux console. So that if you want to display at the Linux console, instead of using freesuite.console log, you can use stream write. All right, let's proceed. Of course, besides the besides running the commands the free switch commands at the console you will also need to connect your script your script to the database now the bigger picture here is that a call comes into your free switch uh, free switch calls a script and in some situations or in real life situations you might want your script to check the database verify a few things and then make a response to the customer so we need to think of how we can talk to the database and there that is where we have the free switch dot dbh object or method and this the dbh object is a handle to all kinds of databases supported natively by free switch so we have like sqlite postgresql odbc uh, these are these are all databases and and ODBC is a middleware that gives you access to all databases that have an ODBC compatible driver. So if you want to connect to FreeSwitch, it is recommended to use DBH, just like uh, Mike mentioned earlier. The, the, prob the, the difference here is that your script will be using will be using the connection that is already there. There is, a, there is a database connection. When your free switch runs, it initiates a database connection to the database. So your script will be using a connection that is already existing. It will, it will only be availing handlers that as you need them. So that means you don't have to initiate a connection to the database whenever you run your script. And that one is very important to understand because with Lua SQL, the alternative method, you initiate a connection to your database every time your script runs. So that means if you're having a massive calls or many calls going on, that means you're going to, to use up all your connections or your connection, your connections to the database. And that means if your if your database reaches the maximum connections, it might hang up. It might And that's very bad. <laughs> yeah, it might smoke. <laughs> So we, 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 we support DBH or we, I, I would strongly recommend DBH because it's actually using the connection that is managed by FreeSwitch. Yeah, so like Mike said, it's, it's connection caching plus connection pooling. And so exactly, not yeah. only it, are you gonna get much quicker results, like in, the, in, in when we were talking in the community corner, that person's test that they had, there was actually there was a couple of different problems with it. They were they were actually within it was either a while or a for loop, but they were actually writing out to the console in the loop. Exactly. <laughs> so they weren't exactly. even closing the connection, right? <laughs> so, exactly. But so but the, um, okay, go. Yeah, sorry. All right, it's okay. So I'm going to I'm going to showcase how to use 
you can go to our link here that I've shown in the slide here if you want to read more about DBH, but I'm going to show you some examples I've written. I have some two sample scripts. One will be connecting to SQLite and one will be connecting to Postgres database all using DBH. So let's see here. Here my screen. Uh, it is test seven. But Lua. And this, this script here basically it connects, it uses freesuite.dbh to connect to the SQLite database uh, in the subdirectory DB. And then it, it will, of course, exit if we didn't connect properly. And then it uses the test reactive. This function uh, goes through all these commands. The first command is a select statement. The other one is a drop table. And the other one is create. So what what is going to do if the if my table exists, it's the, the select statement will run. If it doesn't exist and this command fails, it will proceed to drop table. And if drop table doesn't ex, doesn't succeed, because of course if the table is not there, the first two commands won't work. It will go ahead and create the table, and that's how test reactive works. After we've created our table, we are going to add in some values. Uh, we are adding using the insert statement, insert into my table values one and four, and then insert into my table values two and bar. And then we are going to select those values out, select ID, name from my table, function row, and then we display at the console or at, at the Linux console. I told you stream right works at the Linux console. So I, right. I want to point something out because it's really important. See, the string yep. format is very important, right? And so yep. The, yep. the great yep. thing yep. about string format is you can lock down type. So if it's a if it's an integer, you can have it set as a digit. If it's a float, you can you can have, you can set it as a float. If it's a string. And that's, you know, when you're sending stuff to the database, it's very important. You know, that's yep. not, it, it, it's not a total security measure, but it goes a long way. Yeah, it, it saves you a lot. If it, you might find that, uh, that if, if a database is, is really case sensitive, then you, you really need to do a string format. Um, and it also helps you learn to be quoting your values, like putting them in quotes. It will it will definitely decide if this is an integer or. or... Today, All right. So you know, I'll, when I'll, when anytime working with databases, you always have to be cognizant of what's being sent to it and filter it. Exactly. Yeah. Sure. So I'll I'll also do I'll also show you the test seven. I have another one using DBH, but this time connecting to the Postgres database. And this is the one I'm going to run so that we see in real life what is being sent to our database. And you can see the difference here is that the DBH function, first of all, takes the database type, which is PG SQL. And that one represents Postgres database. And then we are giving it the database name, which is free switch. And the user is Postgres. You can see that I'm skipping with, I'm separating with spaces. I'm separating these parameters with spaces. And then the password is test pass. So we can select from the table or the database from my table, from my from a table called my table. Let me first connect to the database and show you that this table doesn't exist. I use a database free switch. So if I do select from my table. It of course says the relation, my table does not exist. So the table is not there. Even if I do, uh, I, that command is show all the tables in the database, you can see that there is only CDR table and nothing else. So I'll jump out and then go and run my script. I can actually run it from the Linux command line. Change these quotes, so you can actually see that it's 
it did its work in the background and then it displayed it selected from the database and displayed that the, the values and said two rows were affected let's go back to the database and see what exactly transpired let's try our command again you see select stuff from my table we now have new values in the table which is changed and changed let's see why we have changed instead of foo and bar that's something that should have been done by the script it's actually at this this stage where it's doing the update it's saying update my table set name to changed so it goes in changes all the values to change and then you you display how many rows were affected and this is the level that we are seeing here when we run this script at this part here the two values are inserted and then the update command ran and that's why we have two rows affected so when i went back into the database to select from my table i found these two values all right so that's that's basically how you run uh how you connect to the database from your from your lua script all right and so um, what 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 are the scenarios that you would want to use any of the scripting languages any other scripting languages no just any in general so like we have we have a static dial plan and then yeah you know. okay so the, the scenarios would be if you want more flexibility if you figure out that you want to create some loops like i've shown you loops whereby i'm doing something uh, repetitively then you find that it might be better off being done in a script than than xml because there you're hitting the limitations of xml dial plan and if you realize that your your dial plan is becoming more complicated and you're doing things like load balancing you're doing things like uh ivr stuff that you have to query the database and then return values maybe a customer calls and provides you their id and you have to verify that id in the database so things are becoming more complicated those are some of the scenarios where you should consider scripting so like if you, so if you find yourself using inline too many times in the xml sure. it's time to start looking at at scripting languages <laughs> exactly and 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 lua would be unless you you already fell in love with a different scripting language but lua would be your first choice it would make your life easy if you start with it <clears throat> all right we have also we have the freesuite.event object ideally this one allows your script to inject an event into free switch uh this is more like th this code here shows you how we can create a custom event and then we can also consume the events or we can also display and, and pick up the events so we using the object free switch dot event consumer uh, this object creates a listener or consumer for a certain kind of event in free switch and <clears throat> i have a script that shows that s a dot lua this is basically the script that would create an event and then it adds a header to the event and then fires the event and then below here we we listen to that event as it is displayed so this is a simple script that fires an event and then listen to it you could actually split these two scripts and run them separately on different on different fsli consoles of the same server and see results in real time but i'll run it here at the same time so that you can see how it performs uh we can say lua look on weekly test eight Oops. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I need to do this. Lua Run doesn't have access to stream right, so I, that's why I had to use Lua instead of Lua Run. And this is the event that has been fired. 
you can actually see it's being displayed here. The header was high there. And okay. so you can do a lot of you can do a lot of cool stuff with eventing, right? Exactly. Yeah, you can you can do a lot of stuff, and that is just a sample. But uh, when you look into our documentation from the confluence, and then you look at the mod commands, you can do so much. And like I said, this this is just an intro, where I'm I'm driving at showing you something really cool. And as I finalize, I'm going to be showing you our very own IVR manuscript, but this time running in Lua. So that when, when if you've installed FreeSwitch before, we have in our vanilla configs we have the IVR that runs when you call 5000 from your registered extension. Let me first demo that actually. If you go to the console and then just die. Uh, just dial 5,000. So this is this is the this is the default IVR menu that is that comes shipped with FreeSwitch, and I'm going to show you. How we can how we can how we can put this into Lua, and I have a script that is that is going to show what exactly transpires. Instead of doing that, I've created a dial plan here. When someone dials 9912, it will just go and run a Lua script called test9. And in test9, that's where I've put the, all the functionality of the IVR. Once you have that script and you understand exactly what it does, you'll be able to produce magic with Lua scripting. All right, let's see what is there in, in um, test nine. So this is a script. Basically, what happens here is it, it, it answers when someone calls, it answers and then plays back some silence of one second. And then it tests if the session is not ready, it ends. And then it also captures, we have the digits, session play, get digits. This function or this session method is the one that is used to capture the DTMF commands and then play, play the digits, play phrases, capture the numbers that are being entered. And then we proceed to the menu that says, uh, that filters the enter digits and says that was an invalid entry. So we, we, we continue through these menus and then if it's a conference, so I'm going to make a call to this 9912 and we see how this script basically works. So as I've shown you, all I need to do is call 9912 and our script will be called. Nine nine one two. Future of telephony. This IVR will let you test some of the features of your free switch installation. You may exit at any time by simply hanging up. If you know your party's extension, please enter it now. Please hold while I connect your call. So, so I've just, so I've just made a call to a thousand, and the IVR just made that call, and I've been put on hold. You can hear the hold music. So I just hung up. is not available. Record your message at the tone. Press any key or stop talking to end the recording. So I'll just I'll just hang up. This is this this is the same IVR script that we have in the vanilla config. So I just wanted to show you a demo that our our script really works. Most of the scripts that I've used in this demo are found in the in our free switch cookbook 1.8 so you can purchase it and then find the scripts there and 
watch this video and then we move along together. Uh, so I guess that's the end of my presentation today regarding Lua. Well, you know what I really like about Lua? So, so what's really wonderful about Lua is, you know, we're, we're accessing Lua from the dial plan here. But Lua with FreeSwitch has the, the ability of bindings too, right? So we can have it do XML handling, you know, for like dial plan, for directory. And yeah. those can be independently called and everything. So, I mean, essentially, it, it, essentially you can handle everything in Lua. From that perspective, yeah, it's it's quite dynamic. You can you can create dynamic dial plans and and more advanced stuff. Well, it was it was a wonderful presentation. <laughs> um, thank you for coming in today, and we can't wait to see more. You're welcome, Mike. So I, I, I will work on the advanced. Lua stuff where I can I can do ESL outbound ESL and inbound ESL with Lua, but that is to come sometime. Okay. Well, we look forward to it. All right. Thank you. Back to Back. you, Ken. All right, guys. Uh, thank you very much, Fred and Michael, and uh, thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Mike Jarris, for answering the community quarter question earlier. Uh, we'll be back here next week, guys, with Mr. James Cad will be our special guest. You don't want to miss that. Always a fun fellow to talk to, and uh, we should be hearing about uh, some of the things that uh, are possibly going on at uh, Microsoft. So uh, come back and see us then. Don't forget, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and uh, don't forget, subscribe to YouTube. You'll get notifications as we post new videos. We'll see you guys next week. You've been watching Kukon Weekly. Tune in every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Central. Keep up with the latest happenings by subscribing to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, or visit us at freeswitch.com.